I showed how to remove snapshots early on in the series, but let's go a little bit more in depth. I'll show you how to remove single, multiple snapshots, how to remove snapshots by group, and how to remove snapshots based on retention policies. So I've got three snapshots files, FreshBK and Media. Let's focus on FreshBK for right now. And it's got four snapshots here. And each snapshot just has this one file. To remove a snapshot, all we need is the snapshot ID. And we can use the forget command. Followed by the ID. And if we do snapshots, we see that that first snapshot is now gone. You can remove multiple snapshots by copying multiple snapshot IDs. For example, if I copy this one and copy this one, this will go ahead and remove both of those snapshots. And we just have this one left. You can also do forget latest, and this will remove the latest snapshot in the repository. And because that was our last snapshot, we have nothing. If we look at the size of this backup, we see it has a size of 57 megs, which you would expect it to be zero since it has no data in it, but it does. Removing snapshots does not actually delete the data. For that, you need to use the prune command. If we run the prune command on FreshBK, we see some stats here and we can see the amount of space it removed from the repository. If we check the size of this backup again, we notice that it's a lot smaller now. Now you may be wondering why you need to use the prune command in order to delete the data from the repository. Well, the forget command is faster and simply focuses on cleaning up the snapshot list. The prune command can be really time consuming depending on the size of the backup, as the rest of during the prune process has to go in and actually adjust the bits of data inside the repository. I think of prune as a safety measure too. If you accidentally remove a snapshot, you can easily retrieve the data using the recover command. We'll look at recovering files in the next section. It is possible to use the forget and prune command at the same time. I've gone ahead and backed up that video to the FreshBK repository again. And this time, if I use the forget command and apply the option prune, we'll see that it not only removes the snapshot, but also runs the prune function as well. And we can tell by looking at the size of the backup, as it has no data in it. Let's look at removing snapshots based on host name, tags, and paths. I'm working with my media repository now, here. And it's got all these snapshots, and I want to remove snapshots that have the path of this video. So I can use the forget command followed by the path option and copy the path. And what this will do is tell Rustic to find all snapshots that have the path and then remove those snapshots. Now, if I run this, we're going to get an error because we have no policy set. When you're not removing individual snapshots, you must specify a policy. This could be done a couple of ways. We'll be looking at retention policies later in this video. So we'll go back to this command and apply a policy. We'll use the keep last, followed by how many snapshots we want to keep. I want to remove all of these snapshots, so I'll just say one. Now you can't use zero because Rustic will not allow you to remove every single snapshot for a given policy. So we'll say keep last one, and this will remove this snapshot and this snapshot but keep this one as it's our latest one in this path group. We run snapshots. We see we just have this one snapshot for this path. Now, if we wanted to completely remove snapshots that have this path, we could simply use forget and that snapshot ID. I'm going ahead and re back up that video again, and I'm going to show you how to remove multiple snapshots by tag. Like before, we'll use forget, and this time use the tag option with the name of the tag. In this case, all snapshots with the tag Wendy. And we'll keep the last two snapshots. So only this snapshot will be removed. And we'll keep these two. And of course, we just have our last two snapshots. For snapshots that have the tag Wendy. 
And of course, we can use the host option as well with our forget. So we'll forget by host. And I've got some new snapshots that I just did with the Wendy in the video. And we'll say example host. And we'll keep the last one of those. And so for example host, we just have one snapshot. You can combine tag host and paths when removing snapshots. Consider this. If I use the forget command and apply host and tag, this will tell Restic to only look for snapshots that have the host, example host, and tag Wendy. So only these three snapshots should be affected and not these two that also have the tag Wendy. Let's run this. And of course, it kept this last snapshot and removed these two. Let's look at removing snapshots by group. By default, Restic groups snapshots by host name and paths. So when you use the forget command, such as this one, Restic is going to look for all snapshots with the host name, such as this, and the path, such as this, and keep the last one. I'm going to use a dry run so we can see what happens when we run this command. And Restic gives you a report of everything that will take place after running this forget. The first thing it says is it's going to keep this snapshot that has the host this and the paths this which would be this one then it says it's going to keep this snapshot for the reason being that it's the last snapshot with this host and this path sure enough this is the only snapshot with this path and this host only then down here it says it's going to keep this snapshot because it's the only one with with this set of paths so that would be this entire group of snapshots. We're going to keep this last one and remove these four. So let's run that. Run snapshots. And now we have a much more condensed list of snapshots. And each of these represent their own group of snapshots. We can control how rested groups these snapshots when we use the forget command. I'm working with the files backup now, which is here, and it's got these snapshots. And I'll use the forget command and only group by host. Remember, by default, Restic looks for host name and the paths. This time, I'm telling Restic to only apply the retention to snapshot groups based on their host name. We do a dry run on this. It tells us it's going to remove these three snapshots from this host which would be these three, keep that latest one, and remove this snapshot, keep this one, as these are the only two snapshots we have for the B-Link. If we use Restix defaults, this would be a group, and this would be a group. Let's go ahead and run this instead. Run snapshots. And we just have two snapshots since we've removed all the snapshots based on host, keeping the last one. Another way that you can group snapshots is to group them by no group. Let's go back to working on the media backup. And I want to simply remove every snapshot keeping the last one, regardless of their host, regardless of paths, tags. Just remove every snapshot. We can do this with the group by none, as I call it. So media forget and we'll group by none or follow it by an empty string. Double quotes. We run a dry run on here and we'll keep the last one. I keep using last one. Obviously keep as many snapshots as you want. If you have like a hundred snapshots and you want to keep the last 10, you would do keep last 10 or whatever. I'll keep the last one. And it's going to keep this snapshot and remove all of these other ones. So now we just have this one snapshot. And if we wanted to get rid of that one, we can simply do forget latest removing every single snapshot in the repository. Let's look at Restix retention policy options. 
up to now, we've just been using the keep last option in Rustic Forget. And this is just one of many retention policy options that you can choose from to control how many snapshots to keep when you use the forget or forget prune command. We have keep last, which keeps the most recent snapshots. You can keep by hourly, daily, or 24 hours. You can keep by weekly, monthly, yearly. You can keep by tag. Keep within duration or a timestamp. So there's a lot. And I'll show you the retention policies that I use on the daily. Let's pretend that we have an imaginary backup in which to run our retention policies on. Let's say we're going to make a script that will be used in, say, Task Scheduler that will run every day at 12 a.m. You want to remove all snapshots within the last seven days. You can do keep daily, followed by how many daily snapshots you want to keep. If you want to keep the last seven days or the last week of snapshots, you do keep daily seven, for example. Let's say after a week you want to keep the latest snapshots for the week. You can do keep weekly. And maybe I'll keep the latest weekly snapshots for four weeks. All snapshots for that week will be removed, except the latest one. After four weeks, it'll be removed. And let's say you want to keep the latest monthly snapshots. You can do 12 to keep the snapshots for a year, maybe 24 months to keep the latest snapshot of the month for two years, however you want to do it. With the retention policy such as this, we can rest assured that we'll be keeping at least seven daily snapshots, at least four weekly snapshots, and at least 12 monthly snapshots. Here's a similar example on the Rustic website itself, where it keeps five weekly snapshots and 75 years worth of yearly snapshots for a total of, well, with all of these, 100 years worth of snapshots. Now, this retention policy, which uses keep weekly, keep monthly, keep yearly, works best when you have an automated backup. If you have irregular backups or infrequent backups, you'll want to use keep within, such as keep within daily, keep within weekly, where you can apply things such as D for days, M for month, Y for year. And note that there is no W for week. So whenever you want to reference a week, you would need to do something like days. Seven days for a week. Here's a policy that I use for my documents backup. Since it's a manual backup, I keep daily within the last seven days, keep within the last week for a month, keep within the last month for 10 years. The result is I keep monthly snapshots for 10 years, I keep the last snapshots for the last seven days, and I keep weekly snapshots for a month. And so as we can see here, I have from month 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and now we're keeping the last seven days in the last month. It's a little difficult to try to demonstrate the more advanced retention policies as all of my backups are up to date. And I don't have any old backups and demonstrate time-specific policies. However, one thing I highly suggest you do when running retention policies is to use the dry run option. So Rusty can tell you exactly what will happen when you decide to remove snapshots. In this case, you want to look at the reasoning as to why snapshots are being removed or kept. These snapshots are all being kept because they fall within my retention policies. These snapshots fall under the keep monthly within 10 years. These fall under the keep weekly for a month. This one falls under keep within seven days, keep within weekly for a month. So using dry run, you can see exactly how your retention policies will be applied. I actually forgot I made a copy of this media backup prior to making this video. So I do have a backup in which to demonstrate an automatic retention policy script. We'll create a script that will just keep the last five snapshots in this media repository, regardless of host, tags, paths, and so on. I've gone ahead and created a bat file called forget. And in this file, all we have to do is just type plastic minus R on our repository. We'll run forget and keep the last five snapshots. And I'm going to group by none to tell Rustic that I don't care about the host or the past. I just want to keep the five latest snapshots. And then we'll run pause just to see what happens. After that, we can come over to Task Scheduler, 
create a task and we'll just call it resting forget. So we'll run this script daily. I'll run it on the next day at 12 a.m. And we want to run our forget bat file. And when this is done, we should have five snapshots instead of seven. Go ahead and run this to simulate our retention policy. And we see it removed these two snapshots and kept these five. And running snapshots on D Media, we have our five snapshots. If you had a retention policy to keep 12 monthly snapshots, you could do something like monthly and run your task on a monthly basis, selecting all the months, and say maybe we want to run our retention policy on the last day of the month. Again, you would select your script and you get the picture. So with Restix retention policy options in collaboration with Windows Task Scheduler, you can create some pretty complex retention policies for your backups. In the next section, I'll show you how to recover deleted snapshots. Thank you.